What's up guys? It's Taco here with Amped Up Outdoors. Got another little tacos tip for you. Right now, I'm getting ready to rig up some Bustum Baits. If you don't have any of these, go ahead, hit your local stores up. I know Fishbones carries them. I believe Anglers has them. I mean, they're all over the place. You can even get them right online right from Boston Baits. One thing I always do when I rig a soft plastic bait is the first thing I do is I take my bait and I just bite the, the very tip of it off a little bit. So it's kind of squared. I don't know where I picked it up from. I've been doing it this way for years. Um... You know, I don't know that it, it helps, harms. It's one of those things that I've been doing it and it works for me. The reason I like it is it gives me a nice flat surface to use a screw lock hook. So with the screw lock hook, basically I just kind of Screw the bait onto the hook. Screw it up. Right till it's at the hook's eye, just like so. Then I take and measure with my thumb approximately where that hook is going to come through. stick the hook through. I really like these Boston baits because they have the little hook pocket. So my hook is pretty exposed, but it's still pretty weedless. You know, basically when you're, when you're done, your bait looks just like this. Even though right now this looks totally perfect to me, I'm not going to be set until I put this in the water tomorrow. Right here in the headquarters, I can't tell anything. When I get it in the water tomorrow, if it's got that nice little shimmy wiggle, then I know it's right. If you're off center on your screw eye or, you know, you don't have your hook back far enough and it's caused that bait to bunch, it's going to make it spin versus the nice smooth wiggle. So every time I go before I cast a rubber lure, I'll put it in the water, kind of drag it along and look at the action of the lure. You know, just right there at the rod tip, you don't even have to cast. If it's running nice and true, it looks like it's running pretty straight and alive. I'll start throwing it. If it's pulling to one side or it's kind of spinning in a circle, that's when I'm going to take my time, take that lure off, either re-rig it if it's not damaged too bad, if, it's, if I tore it up too bad, taking it off, then I'm just going to go back in my pack, grab another one, and start over. I mean, I have caught fish on lures that weren't running proper, but I've caught a lot more fish on lures that are running proper than I have on lures that are not running proper. Now I'm going to tie it on to my leader. Now one another little tip I picked up, and I don't remember who, who told me this. I've been doing this probably 15, 20 years now. Before I tie my knot, I always thread on a bead. And it's whatever color you, you can find. You can pick these up at any, any craft store, uh, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. All, they all have just a little glass faceted beads. But I slide that on, and then I'm going to tie my lure on. The 
B does a couple of things for me. One, it does help kind of keep some weeds off your lure. Number two, it also kind of protects your knot. So if you reel up all the way to your rod tip, that bead's gonna stop that knot from going up near your rod tip. You can also use it as an indicator because if you see your bead, you know your lure's right behind it. So my end result, I have my bait with my red bead. Um, another thing I, I read once, or I believe I read it in a magazine or or one of the books, um, because I do have all the books out there from Sean Kimbrough, Lenny Rudo, Joe Bruce, because I read a lot in my free time. That bead could almost look like this is a bait fish and he's got something. So it kind of makes that predatory instinct kick in. Because why just grab a bait when you can grab a bait that has something else? I mean, I don't know if any of that's true. Like I said, I'm 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 a mechanic. I'm not a scientist or a biologist. Um, makes sense to me, and it's what works for me. I'm headed out in the morning. Going to do some rock fishing with a, with a old coworker of mine. He called me up wants to go so I figured okay we're gonna go so I'm sitting here in my my headquarters rigging a couple of rods up like I said I've got some some flukes I've got some uh rage tails you know bunch of different stuff basically we're gonna go and, and cast along piers and shorelines and see if we can get us a, a couple of rockfish you know, if I happen to find a snakehead in the process, then I find a snakehead as well. You know, hopefully I'll get this GoPro all charged up. I'll get it out on the boat with me tomorrow. Hopefully we can get some video of these lures in action. But again, if, if you don't have any, go pick you up a couple of packs of these Busta Baits, you yeah. know. They're made in the USA. They're really, really nice lures. Like I said, I, I, I use them almost exclusively. Um, you know, take it out and do a little t comparison. You know, take a, another fluke style lure and, and run them side by side. I mean, these do have a very, very unique little pattern here. And they, they do have a, very, very nice wiggle to them when, when they're in the water. You know, plus, they're a local vendor. You know, I'd rather give my money to, to some of the local guys than, than feed some big wig, you know, that doesn't really give a hoot about fishing anymore. I'll catch you guys out there. You know, if you see me out and about, don't forget to shout at me. Get yourself a couple amped up stickers. I got plenty of them. I got a whole a whole big bag right here. You know, I have them in my truck. You know, if you want an amped up sticker for your kayak or your boat, um, your tackle box, you know, just shout at me. Say hi. I'll catch you guys out there. We'll see you on the next one.